Good morning. Good morning. I, uh, let us prepare our minds and our hearts and our spirits to worship our God. And you are invited to stand in body or in spirit. And uh, let us join together in our call to worship. The Spirit of God moves among us, binding us with faithful people in every time and place. The The Spirit moves through us, making us channel of God's love. Let us open ourselves to the Spirit of the living God, made known to us in Jesus Christ. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 451, Open My Eyes That I Might See. Encouraging us to grow in the light of God's love. We can trust God with our deepest confessions. Would you join with me in the unison prayer of confession you'll find in the bulletin, which we will follow with a time of silent prayer of confession, and then we'll join together in the assurance of pardon. Let us confess our sins to God. Spirit of God. We confess we forget our reverence for human time. You created us to be one people. So come among us to reunite us of being unique. May we truly hear our sisters and brothers and respond to them. Speak to each person in their own language. The tribunal of God has been given to all God's children. It is a God's Spirit prays with us and for us. God's hope strengthens us in times of weakness. God's grace heals our brokenness. 
I don't see any children hiding under the pews this morning. They must be out playing. We can't have that idea. I mean, we still have to do that. And so we'll move right through to hearing the word. As we prepare to hear the word of God, we pray that God might stumble us, startle us with truth, and open our minds to the spirit of God that we may be one with Christ our Lord and serve as his faithful disciples. In preparation of hearing the word, let us sing together from hymn 455, the verse you'll find printed in your worship bulletin. <coughs> comes from the epistles. It is from 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 through 13. Listen for the word of God. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by one Spirit. To another, working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of the Spirit to another various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one, by the one and same Spirit, who allots to each, each one of us individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. May God grant to us understanding of this God's holy word. Our second scripture lesson this morning may be familiar. It's from Acts 2, verses 1 through 18, and begins, When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. Sorry. 
all are amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. People of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Here was the spirit is saying to the church, thanks be to God. Let us join our hearts and minds in prayer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in my sight of oh God. You are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A few years back, a fellow named Jeff Foxworthy became famous for his jokes about rednecks, which he defined as someone with a glorious lack of sophistication. You might be a redneck, said Jeff Foxworthy, if your grandma was asked to leave the bingo game because she threatened the caller with the handgun in her purse. <laughs> you might be a redneck if you come back from the dump with more than you took. <laughs> you might be a redneck if you know how many bales of hay will into your car. <laughs> you also might be a redneck if you burn your fields instead of mow them. Now, sort of our practice around here. Now, I will admit, I don't know exactly why it's okay to make fun of rednecks in our politically correct society, but perhaps it's because rednecks make fun of themselves. I read an article by Jeff Foxworthy, who not only identifies himself as a redneck, but he says, if you can't make fun of yourself, you're either taking life or yourself way too serious. <laughs> now, I have discovered that we live in a part of the country where some people think we're rednecks. Perhaps because we live in a small town and they have to drive a long way <clears throat> in and out of the canyons. I'm not sure why, but I have encountered people who seem to think we are ignorant country folk. Now, while I was born in Phoenix, Arizona, which by almost anyone's definition, is a pretty big city. <clears throat> and I went to seminary in San Francisco, which is pretty big too. I do confess, I much prefer the pace that happens here, the beauty that is all around us, that and I never, although you have to go down or across for groceries at least once a week, two days a week, I still enjoy that drive because it's so beautiful. Nevertheless, I'm a bit surprised when someone called me a redneck. I thought it was back when Jeff and I and several others were teaching um, our theology and country music seminar. I encountered this guy from New York City who was attending another seminar on urban ministry. And he looked down, down his nose at me and he said, I don't know how you rednecks get to third to teach your class. After all, isn't theology and country music an oxymoron? I'm sure he didn't even have a clue that I knew what oxymoron was. <laughs> I must confess something came over me. And I smiled sweetly, and in my thickest fake drawl, I replied, well, I guess it would be if y'all were as ignorant as y'all are but about country music and theology, and you clearly have more nerve than I do, boy, because I would never, in fact, I would keep over dead before I wore what you're wearing right now. <laughs> and I slowly gave him the once over, I've learned this from certain men that I was around. At any rate, 
his white shirt and tie, proceeded to his plaid Bermuda shorts, and then to his spindly white legs sticking out of his white socks and wing tip shoes. Um, <laughs> dirt on his fancy shoes with my cowboy boots and added, now, I'll be sure and watch out for them rat snakes because they are especially fun of white game boy ankles. His mouth open and he glanced around nervously like that was on your mind. So I grinned and left. And I didn't even really feel guilty until the next day when he came up to me and said, Thank you for saving my life. It appears that he went for a hike on the Mesa and got a little tired, so he sat on a rock to rest. And lo and behold, a snake, he swears it was a rattlesnake, but <laughs> I was there to find out, crawled out from under the rock. And so he jumped up on the rock and screamed and hollered and refused to come down until the wrangler came by and put him on, the, on his horse and gave him a ride back. <laughs> the thing is, he refused to go anywhere except his seminar and the dining hall after that because, I don't know, he didn't trust those snakes. Uh, he refused to, <clears throat> excuse me, the wrangler and I had a pretty good laugh, and I thank God for having such a great sense of humor. I suppose it is possible I am a redneck after all. <laughs> now you may be wondering why I am going on and on and on about rednecks on Pentecost Sunday. It is because Galilee was considered the cultural equivalent of redneck country in the time of Jesus. Galilee was wild country and many folks made their living by fishing or tending sheep. And you can tell a Galilean by his or her accent, I understand. Scholars suggest that Galileans had difficulty pronouncing guttural and had the habit of swallowing syllables when they were speaking. So they might say running instead of running, or hunting instead of hunting. They might say far when they mean fire, or creek when they mean creek, or y'all when they meant you. None of this is familiar with any of you, I'm sure. <laughs> So Galileans were looked down on as being provincial, backward, and maybe even a little slow. When Peter stood in the courtyard while Jesus was being interrogated by Pilate, a servant girl knew Peter had been one of his Jesus' disciples. Why? Because his accent gave him away. So now, knowing what we do about Galileans and their accents, put yourself in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. Here are these Galileans, these redneck country folks, and suddenly they're speaking eloquently in foreign languages. They are speaking the equivalent of Greek and Latin and Arabic and Ethiopian and Turkish and Nigerian, probably. <clears throat> and they're all speaking eloquently. The thing is, the people that heard them, people who came from these same countries all over the known world at the time, understand them perfectly in their own tongue. So this is a little digression. Imagine <clears throat> Andy Griffith of Mayberry. He suddenly burst forth in fluent Arabic. Or Gomer Pyle saying, Kalimera, as if Greek was his native language. If you can imagine this group of rednecks with limited or no education and how they could suddenly speak exotic languages, then you can imagine that first Pentecost. No one of the crowds who heard that were astonished and stunned. No wonder this event had such an impact. No wonder when Peter stood up to preach that thousands were converted. This was dramatic. This was extraordinary. This was unbelievable. These country folk suddenly became remarkable communicators. And this thing 
I think, brings us to the first point we need to think about on Pentecost. And that is, that is it is a day of unity and respect for all people. That Pentecost, Jerusalem was teeming with pilgrims from all over the known world that come seeking God. They brought with them the most precious gifts of all, their own heritage. Their language and the culture formed the framework in which these pilgrims understood reality and as the window through which the world could reach their soul. So when the disciples addressed these people in their native language, they engaged them in a very meaningful level. The pilgrims had come to Jerusalem with a common need for God, but they never expected God would reach out to them in such a personal way by speaking in their own language. Like the Jerusalem pilgrims, we also come seeking meaning. We carry around our identities and worldviews, perhaps unaware that they both influence who we are and what our true gifts might be. Then the Holy Spirit comes, and it speaks to each one of us according to our own heritage. It sings the songs we sing, and it dances the way we dance. In the Spirit's presence, we are accepted the way we are. And God elects our own way to communicate with each of us. I think one of the most important lessons of Pentecost is that God does not choose any one way at the cost of all others to communicate with human beings. God no longer bestows any culture with a spiritual superiority. No other culture has a spiritual superiority. I'm not sure we've quite learned that lesson yet. Instead, all heritages receive God's revelation of grace. In the days to come, God will continually pour out the Holy Spirit, breaking down the barriers of race, sex, class, and age. Now, in a day when our society is pretty much divided, we need to remind ourselves that through the power of the Holy Spirit, this motley group of fishermen, tax collectors, and housewives became remarkably gifted, articulate ambassadors, enabling Pentecost to become a day of unity and respect for all people. <laughs> In fact, a later convict Excuse me, convert. Both <laughs> 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 of their sentiments and gods when he said and wrote, There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. So Pentecost can be celebrated as a day of unity and respect for all people. Another thing we need to see is that Pentecost is from God. It is not a human invention, even though we continue to carry it on, but God brings it to us and enabled those early disciples to be able to speak that language, whatever language it was, so that they had something extraordinary happening in their lives. Now, it's probably a little amazing that people such as that had these rhetorical abilities all of a sudden at least not under normal circumstances. Something dramatic, powerful, and life-changing was happening, and that something was from God. It's one of those things, you know, when you have a God moment, they happen. Because we need to see that God still is at work in our world, and the Holy Spirit is open to us. <clears throat> if God could use those humble Galileans, think about what God can do with people like you and me. We may not speak different languages, and there may not be tongues of fire dancing on our heads, but God's Spirit still dwells in our hearts and enables us to face even the most difficult circumstances. The church that came out of Pentecost was a church dedicated to unity and compassion for all people. They set up one of history's first programs to care for widows and orphans, for those who were not able to care for themselves and for those who were sick 
or in prison. They would not have grown in numbers as rapidly as they did if the common person had not been able to say, they care about me. They understand what I'm going through. I really do matter to them. The ability to empathize with other people has always been one of the church's greatest assets. So Pentecost is a celebration of God's Holy Spirit, empowering all disciples everywhere with gifts. Pentecost is a celebration of God's power at work in this world. <laughs> The last thing we need to see is that you and I have a place in this dramatic story. <laughs> now, you don't have to be a redneck. Oh, so I do. Anxiety. Anxiety or relief, I'm not sure. But God can use us in such a dramatic way. In fact, most of us have so many more advantages if you think about it, than the apostles did. We are people with an amazing abundance of talents and opportunities, but you and I have not always allowed ourselves to be vehicles of God's spirit. It isn't easy. Sometimes it's pretty difficult. The fire of God is still available to us if we are open to it, though. The wind of God is blowing in this world. People of every nation, every race, every language are being changed by that spirit. Christ calls us to be disciples to all people of the world. We may be female or male, black, white, brown, red, or yellow. We may be rich or poor. We may be millennials, Xers, boomers, yuppies, or members of AARP. <laughs> we may be have no education. We may be aristocrats or Yankees, or rednecks. Mm. I know. There are some Yankees present. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Whoever you are, God will use the gifts that you have. My friends, an amazing thing happened on that first Pentecost. A group of people thought of as rednecks were used by God to start a revolution, and that revolution continues to this day. It is a revolution of respect for all people and a recognition that the Spirit of God will work in each and every one of us for the good of all, even if we might be ready. Amen. Amen. Yes. <laughs> and now I'd like to invite the choir to come forward to sing our anthem. <laughs> this is a little Nigerian, uh, like a Nigeria folk song, and so. It's very short. We're going to sing four versions of it. The third time through, the uh, men will be singing the Nigerian words instead of the English words. So if you don't understand, that's why. <laughs> Not your hearing aid. But by then, you want to memorize what it's about. <laughs> <laughs>
so freely given and so powerfully active within your church. As the Spirit moves in our midst, may it inspire us towards generosity, generosity in the way we treat one another and in the gifts that we bring to your service, O oh God. Amen. 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 And now let us bring to God our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. There's a segment in there where everyone is invited <clears throat> to, if you have a prayer concern or a joy or just something that you have on your heart that you'd like to include in prayer, please, please feel free to do so. Um, we will uh, get to that place. When people do give, uh, share a prayer, we are then invited to respond, Lord, hear our prayer. And to prepare ourselves for that, let us sing together the, from the verses you'll find written in your worship bulletin. Jesus Christ to share our earthly life with all of its joys and all of its struggles. 
Give us grace, O oh God. In our need, may we come to you in humility and receive your blessing with open heart. Help us to see what you see and to know what you know. Help us to understand the love of God so that we can trust the will of God. Hear now, O Lord, our personal prayers of concern, of love, of joy. Yes. Yeah, Laura, your sermon had me thinking of my own kid, Eusti, who's part of the LGBTQ community. And I guess I'd like to offer up um, a request from people throughout this country of ours, throughout the world, where LGBTQ people are being othered, even killed. Um, may the spirit of unity and love happen. Lord, hear our prayers. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And let's pray for healing for Barbara's grandson. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. Yes. For my son in law, Randy Walsh, who is in the hospital, having obstruction on his esophagus. Um, they need to do a procedure so she, he can eat, be fed, and strengthen my daughter to be able to take care of him. Is Randy? Randy Walsh. Randy Walsh. Let us pray for Randy Walsh. Lord, hear our prayers. And Robert Patterson down here. He just got home from the hospital. Let us keep Robert Patterson in, in our hopes and our thoughts and our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Other concerns for George. Yes. Um, for Derek's surgery, he's um, in the hospital and he's having major stroke. Oh. Could you say that again? Sir? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> For Darcy's husband, Donnie, he's in the hospital. He just suffered a major, major stroke. Oh, Lord, hear our prayers. Yes. Oh, for my aunt Flo, who is my godmother who passed away, um, that God may take her and show her his love. And also for my mother now, because that is the third sibling she's lost in the past six months. Oh. And my father passed a year, a year ago. Oh. So she is now the sole survivor of that whole generation of our family. So it's just prayers for her too, because she is the, the sole survivor now. 93, so. 93. For her strength. So your whole, your whole family and our thoughts and prayers, because they go through grief and loss, and particularly strength in her as she moves through this time of her life. Her name is what? Um, my my Aunt Flo. Yeah. Um, Flo Kelly. Flo, Aunt Flo. Flo. Lord, Lord, hear our prayers. Yes, sir. Uh, for Jessica's cover for her, for her son's 16th birthday, which she will not be able to see. Um, it's been uh, 14 years since she's seen him. Oh, my God. He lives in um, Phoenix area. We have sold in our thoughts and our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. For Don Trader in Albuquerque, he's been a long-term advocate for simple living. He lives by example. He never drives. He uses zero carbon. And he was hit by a car walking oh, no. And he's a Don, Don Trader. Let us remember Don. Lord, bring our prayers. Everly has her hand. Yes. Prayer of Thanksgiving for two of our visitors today, Bill and Terry. Bill and Terry. Wow. <coughs> and as I understand, there's some deep family roots in this church. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Well, welcome home. Welcome home. Lord, hear our prayers. Jim. Uh, from Manal School as they form a search committee for a new uh, head of school. B. Let us call the Manal School and our thoughts and our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Yes. Can I follow up on the four presents? Please. 
um, to, as something of an announcement, but also Thanksgiving. They commandeered, the Ford family did, the building of this sanctuary, this part of the building, and y'all can explain it better than I. And DH also contributed the beautiful stained glass windows on the south side. She only left the flame. What did she do? It's been four years. Four years. Oh, no, we enjoyed her presence very much when she was here. The age four and what was your father's name? Dick. Dick. W D. W D. Yeah, Thank you for helping us get connection with our roots. That's wonderful. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For a beautiful sunny Sunday. Indeed, for a beautiful, beautiful day. Lord, hear our prayers. I would add for those who have given their lives and their not only their lives, but their time and energy and any form of service uh, to the larger community. Uh, help us, O oh Lord, to to appreciate what's been done on our behalf and, and, and the freedom we know because of the loss of uh, dedicated people. Lord, Lord, Lord yeah. Yeah. Jeff, is it, is it true that Biden and, and um, McCarthy hit an agreement and if so, maybe that's but, yeah, I just heard on the news that I, I don't know any details that there have come to some agreement with the, the uh, debt Silver ceiling. Yeah. ceiling. And that hopefully we were we will veer away from catastrophe. Yeah. Lord. Yeah. 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 I'd like to ask prayers of comfort for the five stepdaughters of my cousin who recently died here. Oh, in their grieving. Let us remember your, your family, of course. You're drawn in your family in that loss. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. And for Takapo, she's from Cuba and traveling. Yeah, let's keep Takapo. One of the reasons uh, Cuba doesn't have a pastor, and we have gone through an incredibly difficult year. And since the beginning of the year, they've lost four elders. Uh, they're an older congregation, and so they're down to a handful of people, and we're a connectional church. We try to reach out and help each other. And so, uh, to God, who's doing that on our behalf? And we speak God. Lord, hear our prayers. Any other? Thanksgiving like to it. Laura for a beautiful sermon. That was amazing. Yes. Laura, you're our prayer. God bless America. God bless America. Lord, hear our prayers. And the whole world. And the whole world. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us continue to pray together. Guide us. Guide us, O oh God, to reach out to others with kindness, with care and with compassion. For all those who seek your healing and loving touch, be present to them and surround them with your powerful presence. Give us all the courage to live in hope, trusting in you, even when we are faced with all sorts of things that we can't begin to understand. Help us to trust in you, O oh God. And we do give thanks for this wonderful community of faith, this family of faith who seek, who seek to do your will. Encourage us in our ministry to one another and to the world beyond these doors. Help us to reflect your glorious light to others. For we pray all these things in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now I'd like to invite you to stand if you are able, mind or spirit.
our body and join in our closing hymn number 289 on Pentecost they gather. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you both this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And now I would invite you to greet your neighbors with the, with the peace of Christ. And don't forget pop up. Pop and, yes, pop up. Pop up. downstairs. <laughs>